We'll start in the room shortly with Rebecca from Sky. Mark, when it's your turn to bring yourself up on video. We'll start with broadcast and then go to nationals, which I will just confirm with Mike about embargoes, but uh, we're good, Joe? Yeah. Yep, we're good to go with Rebecca. Great, can we start with two views then, please? Yeah, nothing particularly new. Luckily, you know, most of the players have come through. Of course, there's always one or two that you're assessing because they were two tough games at Villa and then against Palace, so there's, there's still a few that are suffering from fatigue. So I must say I should probably leave the team selection until the last minute just to see how, how well people recover. But really, in terms of injury, we've still got Nkulu, basically, who's injured. Kalu, who's suffering from a slight ankle injury. But I don't think there's too many more apart from that. And how about, obviously, Tom Beverley, Joshua King? I think so, yeah. I mean, as I say, the players, they, they both played the full 90 minutes in the two previous games. So they come into that category of players who are probably needing to be monitored a bit more closely for fatigue. But I'm, they trained today, uh, so and they, they were doing their warm down yesterday. So all being well, I'll wake up in the morning and they'll be putting their hands up to play. You've got some big games coming up, Manchester United and Arsenal. How important is it that you've got to be left in Well, it's always important. It seems to me there's very few teams in the league that could possibly have the luxury of saying that, you know, we could afford not to pick up points in the next games because people are playing for European places, playing for titles, or else they're playing to stay in the league. Now, we're in the latter category, playing to stay in the league. We need points sooner rather than later we haven't got that many so far so of course every game we play is another potential opportunity to take the points but the games don't get easier uh, the quality of the opponents is going to make life difficult for us in terms of getting those points but the good thing is we're we're fit and ready to go and to take on the challenge of trying to get those points what do you make of Manchester united under rapper yeah they've been quite good i think they, they've to be honest, they, I think they've been fairly steady for a period now. They were fairly steady under, under Ulo, I think. Um, they're, they're steady with a chance, top four, which is obviously important for them. But they were really in with that chance, I always thought, with, with Ulo as well. But, but Ralph is a guy I know very well. I know how good he is as a, as a manager and, and as a thinker about the game. So I'm pretty sure he'll have the team playing in a, in a very organised and detailed manner and of course the, the quality of their individuals when you play Manchester United is what worries you most because they do have some of the most expensive players on the planet playing for them. Last time I played Manchester United, they one, uh, that was what the biggest, you know, what the biggest thing that was How much of a boost does that give your players going into this game? No, none at all. I mean, I have to bring back the person who masterminded that victory and put out exactly the same team and hope that lightning always strikes twice in the same place. As far as I'm concerned, past results have no effect whatsoever on future results. It's a, it's a different team, possibly. I don't know what the starting lineup was against Manchester United. It's certainly a different manager and coach now, I and myself. And of course, our table position is probably worse now than perhaps it was when we played Manchester United. Once again, I don't have that information at hand. You mentioned earlier that you're not one of the teams that are trying to avoid relegation. Are you confident that we can keep the side up? What do you mean by confident? I mean, um, we're confident we can do a good job in, in preparing the team each week for the, for the games that are coming up. We're, we're confident that we have a group of players here who understand the gravity of the situation and who don't want to be relegated from the Premier League and know that they're going to have to fight if that's not going to happen. But um, I don't know where extra confidence comes from when you're not winning matches and not taking points. You know, it's been a long spell now for Watford, both before we came and even during the brief time we've been here, where those points have not been flowing in. Um, so unfortunately, we've been moving steadily in the wrong direction rather than in the right direction. And what was it like? Well, it's always nice to see the players again that you work with. You know, it was a wonderful period of time. It was nice to see Steve Parrish, a, 
and, and Patrick and his staff after the game as well. So that, that was a pleasant moment, I guess. It was less pleasant to lose the game, especially with those two last goals, which I thought were particularly harsh on us. It would have been pretty unpleasant and saddening to lose the game anyway, but to lose it by four goals to one. I didn't think that was particularly deserved, but we did we did know that it was going to be a, a, a tough game for us to win because we have great admiration for Crystal Palace and the way they're playing at the moment. And unfortunately, they lived up to the level that we thought they would reach. And we weren't good enough on the night to, to, to top that level. You've obviously been a Premier League manager for a number of years. And um, what did you make from Antonio Pitti's comments the other day? Does that show just how much pressure there is on managers? Well, I think I, I've, I've only seen the interview briefly and I've seen it in excerpts because at Sky Sports, as you well know, whenever you get something which is even slightly controversial, it's going to be on there 15 to 100 times a day. And I think I might have caught it on a couple of occasions, but I haven't listened to the whole interview from the start to the end. The one thing I do remember him saying in the excerpt I heard was about his honesty and that you know, he, he was obviously very disappointed in you know, what he's found at Tottenham and very disappointed with maybe the, perhaps thought the squad was going to be different to, to, to what it is. And uh, he made the point, I'm honest, and if the club decide that I'm not the person to help them, I'll come in here to try and do that, but the results at the moment are proving that I'm not helping them, they are free to, to, to let me go. And I think that's an honest thing to do. It's, I think you can do that in his situation. If Tottenham were to let him go, the next club is around the corner waiting to take him on. So it will be quite simply a question for the internally, for Daniel Levy and Tottenham and Antonio to, to work out where are we at this moment in time and what is our future looking like? But I think it's, it was quite refreshing to hear somebody saying something honest and truthful and not trying to obfuscate uh, what, he, what he really was thinking. And my final question, I know it doesn't directly impact what, but uh, obviously with the situation in Ukraine, what do you think about the decision to move to Tottenham? I thought it was a no-brainer. I would have been absolutely amazed if given what Russia has done in invading Ukraine, uh, UEFA thought it worthy of awarding them with a Champions League final. I, I think that would have been almost beggaring belief. So uh, I'm pleased, of course, that it has happened. And in the choice of Paris as a venue, they, they've chosen a good place as well to, to hold it. So uh, well done to UEFA, but I, I've got to say, I think that's one of the easiest decisions they'll ever have to make. Pleasure. Thanks, Rebecca. Can we come on to Zoom, Mark? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, Roy? I can hear you, Mark, yeah. Good stuff. Um, I saw in one of your interviews after the Palace game, you said it's important that you don't let that defeat affect the players in matches going forward. So, psychologically this week, how do you go about making sure morale isn't dented? Well, the same way as you, you do, you know, in, in, in every game, really. After every game, you need to reset the, the barometer and make certain that, you know, you you put it pointing in the right direction for you. You know, you want the fair winds. You don't want the storm that you've just endured, as it were. So you always have to do that anyway. Um, I think it was particularly harsh the other night in, in a game that for long periods was, was relatively even, you know, to lose it by four goals with two goals in the last five or six minutes. That, that probably has been the most important aspect that we don't suddenly think that a, a performance that, we wanted to be better uh, because we weren't we weren't good enough on the night to beat Crystal Palace. Uh, it, it wasn't perhaps the disaster that the scoreline suggests it is. But even more important than that, the game has gone. We prepared for it as best we could. Palace came and, and played as well as they did and, and beat us. And so therefore, we've only got one option, and that is to try and make certain that we don't allow any despondency because we, we didn't dream of losing the game. We, we, we dreamt of winning it. We believed we were capable of winning it. And there were lots of elements in our performance, which I think proved that we were capable of winning it. But we didn't. So therefore, 
It's back to back to square one and face the next game and see if you can get the result that you dream of in that game. Um, I know that you said that the reverse fixture won't have any bearing on this game, different managers for both teams compared to then, but have any of the players been talking about that win against United at Vicarage Road earlier this season in training this week? No. No, not that I'm aware of. If so, they talk amongst themselves. Um, they certainly won't have been talking to Ray because the language they speak, he doesn't understand. I might have had a bit of a chance with the French and the Italian, um, but uh, they certainly might have been talking amongst themselves, but not to, not to us. What have you made about the identity and the threats that Manchester United have under Ralph Rannick? Well, I think they were good. I mean... When are Manchester United not a good team, really? When are Manchester United not a team blessed with very, very good players, with, of course, players who understand the importance of putting on the Manchester United shirt and going out there at Old Trafford, one of the, one of the real temples of European football. So I don't think there's ever been a situation in my time in the Premier League where, oh, it's only Manchester United. It's always, we are playing Manchester United. We are playing at Old Trafford, the place where... People grow up dreaming that one day they might they might play a game there. So whenever you whenever you get drawn to play Manchester United, if you're lucky enough to be in the Premier League, it's going to happen at least once a year. You've got to embrace that situation. You've got to say, well, you know, there's millions and millions who would love to be in my shoes. It's not going to be easy. We want to win, and you know, I'm 40 Man United want to win too. We can only hope that Ralph Ranick has decided that he's got enough points on the board and he can afford to give us three. But uh, I don't honestly believe that's going to happen. Just finally from me, um, you mentioned that you know Ralph. Can, can you tell me about the sort of circles that you've met each other in, experiences of interactions with him? It was with UEFA. It was UEFA in the, in the meetings that they have every year when they get the Champions League coaches together. Well, I wasn't there as a Champions League coach. I was there because... Fulham has got to the European uh, League final, which the first was the first European League final that they had. Um, so I, I got invited to, and that was where I, I spent two or three days with him. And you know, he obviously is a big Anglophile. Ralph, he spoke very good English. He knew of me, of course, from my time in in Switzerland when he was working in Germany. So we we struck up a, a little accord, if you like, during that period of time. But I can't, I can't. Um, pretend to know Ralph very, very well or to have a clear insight into everything he's done. But of course, having got to know him, I have followed his work a bit more closely abroad than maybe I would have done had I not got to know him. Thank you, Roy. Good luck at the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Mark, PA, Killian Live Score, you want to ask him broadcast? Or? It's Pete John, if that's okay. Okay, yeah. Hi, Roy. You mentioned Hi. then about the, uh, the difficulties of playing at Old Trafford, but I don't think many managers would be able to say they've taken seven points from their last three matches uh, at Old Trafford. <laughs> is, is there a secret to that? or No, no pure fluke. Or working with a good team, maybe. The Palace, the Palace were, were good up there. We had two particularly good games, I remember, uh, against them. But uh, I've got to say that, for me, I'm a great believer in the, in the Swedish... What's the word? Not a motto. It's almost a mantra, really. That uh, it sounds better in Swedish, but it translates as, as "what has been has gone." And there's no doubt that you know. It, I enjoyed those moments immensely. I remember you know coming back on the coach or the train after the game, thinking, "What a wonderful feeling to have played well enough to beat Manchester and Old Trafford." But quite frankly, it has no bearing at all on my thoughts with this game. And I can quite honestly say that there was no magic or any sort of dust I can sprinkle, which will help Watford. We've got to go there from, from our position, uh, which is a, a difficult one, and, and try to do what, what, what Palace were capable of. Someone in that United team who's struggling for a little bit of form at the moment is Marcus Rashford, someone you, you've worked with in the past. What you've seen at close quarters, do you think he, he will turn that form around anytime soon? Obviously, from your perspective, not this weekend. Yeah, no, you're spot on. I believe he will. I hope he will. He's a, he's a very, very good person, uh, as well as being, a, of course, a very good player. And what he's done off the field has been quite incredible, really, and has rightly been recognised by, by, 
by the Queen in, in honouring him. So um, I just hope that he gets that form back and that he gets playing again at the level he, we know he can play at. But as you rightly say, I really hope too that that is going to start tomorrow. You know, he can quite happily start the time after that, especially if he's playing against other teams in the relegation zone around us. So we should be definitely rooting for him. Thank you, Roy. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Hi, Roy. Who's that? Um, uh, Killian from Live Score. Killian, Sorry. okay. Yeah, um, just a quick one. You you spoke, you know, um, very briefly there on the the Champions League final. Do you think sport has any place to to play in when instances like this happen? Do I think who's got any part to play? Sport. What is Johnson? Sport. Sport. Oh, sport. sport. Sorry. Sport. 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 Yes. I mean, sport. I don't think it's undervalued the influence of sport at all. I think you know it, it gets its gets its rightful value, and I think everyone realizes that sport is an important factor in people's lives. You know, it's uh, people want sport, they need sport, they are proud when their country does well, they're proud when their team does well, and, and they identify in every single way. So for this to happen, and for the people not only of St Petersburg but it, also the whole of the Russian nation to see that the sporting family in the world has turned against them in this way and has deprived them of something they were looking forward to, I'm certain that that has some sort of effect. Now, let's keep things in perspective. You know, it doesn't have the same effect as bombing and all the things that are going on. I'm not suggesting that for one minute. But I also would like to think that, you know, it, it is one further action that people can take, which at least goes to show once again Russia and, and, and President Putin that you know people in the Western world just do not approve of what's going on in his invasion of Ukraine. Roy, just in, in relation to your own career, I was wondering if you could go back a little while and, and say a manager that you particularly took um, you know, advice from or tactics from or you learned from when you were yeah. developing your own style? Absolutely. There was loads and loads. Um, there was the Holy Trinity of Bobby Robson, Don Howe, and uh, um, my, my mind's gone. Just one second. Dave Sexton. Sexton, Howe, Robson, the Holy Trinity, absolutely. The person that I spend all of my teenage years with and he took me with him hand by hand on a coaching journey, Bob Houghton. Um, and then, of course, in recent years, lots and lots of people that have come across and had the pleasure of meeting have, have helped me as well. But if, if you really want to say, name the people who got you, not only got you started, but put some pretty good ideas into your head that you've been able to benefit from since then, it's that holy trinity. But don't forget Bob Helm, because without him, I maybe would never have even decided to go down the coaching route in the first place. And just finally on, on United, um, how how have you or have you looked much at Ronaldo in terms of obviously some games he's had a few off days? Do you think it's it's you know well, how, how how have you seen that? Well, I don't. I haven't. I haven't been following Man United probably as closely as you have, and I, I don't know how many off days he's, he's had. All I know is that he's one of the world's greatest players, and you know he will always be in that in that group when people are being asked in the future. People of my, in my lifetime, anyway, you know, who were the greatest footballers that you saw play? His his name will be there. He'll be in, certainly in the top ten without one shadow of a doubt. So I don't know about his off days, but. He's very welcome to have an off day tomorrow. In fact, uh, uh, if if Ralph Ranić wants, he's very welcome to leave him out of the team as well. I wouldn't mind one bit. Thanks, Roy. Pleasure. Thanks, Killian. Okay, that's the end of the broadcast section. We'll move to Mike in the room for.